Is your smartphone costing you your savings? According to the Wall Street Journal, the more you use your gadgets to check up on your investments and your portfolio, <laughs> the worse off you'll be in the long run. Joe and Kent joining the conversation right now. Joe, why should you keep all of those stock market apps off of your phone? Well, it's called myopic loss aversion. So basically, if you check, <laughs> I know this is, a, this is a thing and you should know about it. If you check too often, you're more likely to see dips in the market, right? We want to show you some statistics, actually. Okay. So if you check the S&P 500 on your phone every Every single day, there's a 47% chance that you're going to see a dip. And then you might make a change in your investments. You won't be thinking about the long term. You'll be thinking about the short term results. Reactions. Exactly. Oh. So if you check once a month, it's only 41%. Then it goes way down from there once a decade, of course. But everyone's going to check more than once a decade. Hopefully. I'm not going to buy stocks and then not look at it again for a decade. Oh, right. That's true. But think no, about but the month of August. No, but for the long run. I am for the long yeah, run. Right. But, I but there are days check. like, you know, October 1987 exactly. where you can be down 22%. I'm sure that's not a problem. But, again, if you have an app, the, you might see that. Then. The main example <laughs> that a lot of people use and these academics are using is 2008. Of course, everyone is freaking out. Yeah. The market tanks. But if you didn't plan to retire for the foreseeable future, you could have benefited greatly from the S&P 500 over the last couple of years, yeah, right? For sure. And recovered and gained. Yeah. I think it's all so. about short-term, long-term. I, I agree with you, Marie. A decade is certainly too long yeah. to not yeah. long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not but, saying make a move just because you look. Yeah, but how about the month of August, right? If you went away on vacation for the month of August and the month of September, you would have come back in October and you would have seen the stock market right where it started back in August. So maybe a couple of months is an okay time. Or, you know, yeah. there's, a, there's a yeah. more to this, not to be the bear, but, but if I have a little MLA, myopic loss aversion myself, which should be correlated with what I call the HPAD, hedgy performance anxiety disorder, which is, <laughs> uh, they, they, they don't have, they actually have have their own app, which is staring at their screen all day long, which drives a lot of this, you know, ups and downs in the market. Right. But if you just looked at the market in October of 07 and you didn't do anything, you could be down 60 percent by April 2009. By the yeah, way, it depends when you that, get in and out. By yeah. the fact, the fact that you made the Unabomber's notebook over here. Is a big, <laughs> <laughs> you Thank you. Yeah. 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 you that have, is uh, so. It's an honor. Acronym. Wait, you made mine. You made the Unabomber's. Oh, oh I mean, my God. I have a mini version, but you're on mine too. H pad. Yeah, totally. Okay, so can we can we talk about some of these notes that you've been that you've been taking all day and and Every leading day. up to this program? Because I want so to talk skeptical. about recession and the broad yes. economic backdrop, Keith. Yeah, t I mean, I tweeted yesterday's ISM number. So you've been talking about this a lot. There is clearly a recession developing on industrial and cyclical terms. So yesterday's ISM number was, you know, oddly enough, the catalyst for the market to go higher. Bad has been good, has been since the bad jobs report that we got for the last month. So again, it's a really kind of a bizarre world. And a lot of people have called it that, where markets are going up on bad news. So, again, there's going to be a point, I think, where bad actually equals bad. And this Friday jobs report is a big deal. Uh, the last thing that I'd say about this is that the Atlanta Fed, who's tracked uh, GDP as closely as anybody uh, recently, all the other Fed heads have been wrong, uh, but they just cut their GDP forecast last night after the ISM mm -hmm. number. So, again, mm -hmm. they went from 3 to 2.5 to 1.9 percent. We have a range of 0.4 to 1.7 percent for the fourth quarter, which would be another bad quarter. Yeah. And, and, and that's where we're at, and I think that that's going to matter at some point. And it's the jobs number out on, on Friday, but I will say this. The, the expectation is that the jobs number is going to be the best number in three months. That's right. not saying much because the month before was only 140,000 yeah. jobs. <laughs> <laughs> We're really going to be watching for revisions for the month of September as well. 142,000 is what we got last month, but as things tend to happen, as you tend to get revisions. So we'll be watching for that. I think we do have a recession in the cyclical sectors of the economy. There's no doubt, right? Whether you look at ISM, whether you look at the slowdown in PMIs, not in the factory US. Factory orders. But yeah, factory orders, durable goods orders. But the question is, is that going to slow down the overall economy? I think the answer is it's going to slow it down somewhat, but it's not going to destroy it just yet. Mm -hmm. I think the consumer having the unemployment rate where it is today, that provides support going forward. So I agree with you, the rate of change is important, but so is the setup going into this as well. Yeah, by the time we're in a recession, I'm probably going to be the most bullish person sitting here, but again, ahead of the recession is when you position yourself. That's it's when you really got to, even if you yeah. use a four, you still right got to look at the phone and get the quotes, <laughs> because you don't want to buy high and freak out low. That is a right. pretty Stop critical Stop holding thing. up that old phone. This is, this is all-star. <laughs> it's lasted this long. It's a yes. relic pretty soon. By the way, that's going to be the call of the decade when Keith McCullough actually turns bullish on stock. I did at the end of 2012, at the end of 2009. Okay, well, we're, we're waiting for this cycle. Yeah, we just too. need to build our relationship together so I can be bullish at some point. <laughs> All right. It takes a while. Joe, thank you. Joe and Ken.